of Hockey Prospectus. Uh, over the past five years, he's had multiple consulting uh, assignments with NHL and NCAA hockey clubs, and he recently obtained his Master's in Science from uh, Quinnipiac University. Well, So, a different approach to uh, draft analytics. Uh, text mining of scouting reports as a novel data source for improving NHL entry draft analytics. Um, my name is on the presentation here. Um, it's based on a white paper that I did along with uh, Ducker and with Mike Savito. Um, and before that, it started with my uh, master's degree capstone project. So this is a money ball question, right? Scouting or stats? And both of the presenters before talked about uh, why you might want to incorporate both scouting and stats. But I'm looking to do something different here. Uh, I'm looking to use scouting reports as data to do my analytics. The best source that I found going back the farthest covering the most prospects was HockeyProspect.com's uh, NHL Draft Black Book. Um, I was able to go back seven years, um, really five years where they, they were covering more prospects, so they typically cover um, at least 400 prospects. Um, and so we, we had uh, textual data that was over half a million words that we were able to use. And obviously, every year you can add to this. Um, someone will ask, uh, and this is very tiny, um, the software I used was uh, by a company out of Montreal called Provalus Research. Uh, the uh, packages are called QDA Miner and WordStat. When you start working with text mining, what you need to do first is you need to prepare uh, the textual data, so you do uh, some things first, uh, exclusion lists, so you, uh, when you're searching for terms, you exclude articles, you exclude proper names, um, you put in rules to take care of uh, spelling errors, and you do something called lemmatization, and, and that's uh, grouping together different inflected words, uh, forms of a word uh, for analysis. This is probably too small to look at, but here I'm looking at drilling down into the words ability and ability to see if those words are used in similar ways uh, in the scouting reports. Uh, this is something else you can do with the software. You can do something called topic extraction. This is, this is like clustering, but for topic extraction, you can use the same word in multiple topics. Um, this is going back to what I was doing in my, my capstone project, and here I was mostly focusing on uh, what different teams were doing, or uh, as far as, as what, uh, what prospects they were picking. And if you, if you look at some of the, some of the topics, um, you're starting to get interesting looking information here, but it's really not quite something yet. I mean, I highlighted number three up there. Minor midget OHL. I mean, what, what are you going to do with that? So um, it's starting to come together as something interesting, but it's not quite there yet. So the the final step that I took here was um, creating categories. So I went back to typical scouting type categories where you're looking at uh, um, defensive skills and uh, hockey IQ. Uh, passing skills, uh, quick release on the shot, and, and uh, categorizing different two, three, four, and five word phrases as being either good or poor on, on some of these skills. And, and what, what that gives you is something akin to sentiment analysis. Normally in text mining, you use sentiment analysis in seeing what somebody thinks about Coke, Kleenex, or something like that. But in this case, uh, you're using it uh, for expert evaluations. Okay, so here's, here's, some, uh, here's some examples. So 
uh, some phrases that I categorize as poor effort. Um, bit lazy needs to bring his A game, compete harder, needs more consistency from game to game. So um, this was a painstaking process, going through lots and lots and lots and lots of phrases to do this, but, but giving you something valuable in the end. Um, going back to that lemmatization thought where different closely related forms of words, sometimes you can group them together and sometimes you can't. So um, is the phrase compete hard the same as compete harder? And it's probably, probably you can read, some of you uh, with better eyes that can read this. The, the red um, words there are signify poor effort and, and the green ones signify good effort. So in this case, um, compete hard was consistently uh, showed poor effort. So he just needs to compete hard, pure and simple. Whereas competes hard or con uh, tended to be good, but not enough to be categorized as, as, as good effort. So that, that one is just not categorized. A um, little bit of an aside here. Um, just looking at drafted players versus undrafted players, um, you can see some of some of the uh, some of the categories that where where undrafted players um, tend to be more uh, poor vision, poor puck skills, poor passing. But it's interesting to look at some ostensibly good skill sets that undrafted players have. So for instance, the first blue bar there, um, good at puck battles. So um, when you have, if you're writing a scouting report on that type of a player who's probably not going to get drafted, if you're looking for something to say about him, he tries hard. He wins puck battles. And another, uh, another similar chart here looking at um, skills that undrafted players were better at. Good at puck battles, good effort, good net try, good physicality. So it's, so it's interesting to remember that. So in everything you're reading, reading a draft or in a, in a scouting report, a positive, is it always a positive? So now if we go back to the topic extraction, but now we plug in these categories instead of just the words. Um, it yields some familiar hockey skill sets. So I, um, you can see, for instance, um, so for the second one, power forward. I'm going to mention that later. So the power forward. Um, I decided to name this the power forward uh, topic, but it's um, good net drive, good puck protection, good shooting and scoring, good at puck battles. So um, now that we have these categories. Um, they coalesce nicely into some, some skill sets. Okay, so now getting, getting into the, uh, the, the part of the paper and the presentation that Dr. Shuckers helped with. Um, looking at, 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 at doing some predictions here. And what I decided to do was um, not to predict games played, not to predict time on ice, but try to predict um, scoring on an even playing field and um, including as much of a sample as possible. So um, even strength goals, and then I also looked at even strength primary assists. That's, that's on the next page. And I looked at the AHL because you're going to have more prospects make it from junior to the AHL. I think in the future we can look at NHL too. Um, and, and I think the results here are, are interesting in that the worst performance was by actual NHL draft picks. Um, but, and that's been covered in a lot of the papers that have been written about draft analytics. But the next bit is interesting out of this study is the stats-based analytics that we've talked about so far um, regarding draft analytics didn't perform as well as using just this test line data. Um, obviously, we, we had the best performance out of using the stats 
and the tax line data, but interestingly, the scouting data gave better results, a lot better results than, than just the stats data, performance data. And uh, similarly with the primary assist, um, this text mine scouting data performed the best. Um, and, and I think that, that that gives us an interesting conclusion in that the scouts really know how to evaluate skills, but scouts, scouting managers, and front offices maybe don't know what to do with those evaluations come draft day. So this was the, the, uh, the example that we used in the paper. Uh, Alex, the breakout. Right, so um, I failed to mention that uh, we, we looked uh, just for this sample, we looked at just the 40 CHL forwards that were drafted uh, last season and just how our model would have picked them compared to how they, how they were actually picked. And DeBrincat was picked, he was the 14th OHL uh, forward picked um, out of 40. So um, why was he probably picked lower? Probably because he's five foot seven. Um, but uh, going back to that power forward topic that I had there, uh, the model, so our, our, our goals model in particular, um, looked at power forward actually as a negative correlation. So if you think about this, NHL teams usually want to draft somebody that's got that classic power forward build, but frequently that kind of player is probably picking up a lot of their production um, in junior by bullying his way into good positions. And, and a player like DeBrincat, who's already scoring at that level, maybe ostensibly could continue to do that in pro, pros uh, without that skill set. So um, conclusions, um, other studies have shown that draft analytics have uh, outperformed uh, team picks. Um, and as I mentioned, surprisingly, the, the scouting-based analytics uh, based on the text mining perform better than the stat-based analytics. Um, but, but both together uh, provide the best predictions. Um, as I said, scouting remains vital for assessing skills but on draft day, um, you need to take that as an input into the decisions and um, perhaps let analytics make those picks. Um, ongoing work is probably pretty, uh, pretty obvious. We, we just uh, did a sample study with, with the uh, CHL forwards, so we're just going to, uh, we're expanding that to forwards and defensemen. We're uh, adding in performance analytics for the four major junior leagues. Um, and then because we've got this scouting data, we can use that as a fallback um, to provide predictions for players from other leagues, especially high school. I mean, you, high school players, the, the competition varies so much um, in high school. Um, then look at both NHL and AHL target variables, um, add in the 2017 data, um, and then make, make predictions on 2017 and going forward. Um, and again, thank you to my uh, white paper co-authors, Michael Shuckers and Mike Rubito, and you can find the uh, white paper on Michael's website. So I, uh, I have two questions, and the second depends on the first. So the first, um, is it expected that this is going to be public information? Sorry, what part of it? The uh, the sort of phrases that become, uh, that are attributed to good performing players or poor performing players. 
I think a lot of times with a model, um, if something's in the model, something else may fall out of the model. I mean, if you're just thinking about Corsi or Fenwick or Zontime or whatever, generally if you've got one of them in the model, you're not going to have another one in the model. So it, it kind of all works together. Okay, so my, my second was sort of, is there, uh, what would your thinking be when this becomes public and, and a scout can see what phrases have been used to describe good or bad players, how that might change how they describe good or bad players in their scouting reports. I'd rather that scouts just keep scouting the same way. I mean, obviously that, that does make a difference. I mean, that question's been out there with analytics, right, so far is that if players get measured by better Corsi rates, are players just going to start taking Porsche shots from wherever to try to try to raise their, their Corsi ratings. So, I mean, that, that's, that's been out there for in certain ways already, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, but I, I think one of the good things is, is you can build lots of different kinds of models. So, uh, I don't know how easily the scouts will figure that out. Thank you. Other question? So I'm, I'm really intrigued by that uh, scouts did better than the organizations that pay for their services kind of thing. Um, did you do any sort of like sentiment analysis on those overall scouting reports? Like I'm wondering if there was a tendency of scouts to understate. So even though they, they really understood the value of the player, because he wasn't big, they sort of couched that in ways that undersold it or anything like that. I'm just wondering if there's any of that kind of correlation. Well, I think what I'm saying is that the scouts are making the right evaluations. If they say somebody's a good skater, he's a good skater. If they say he's got a quick shot release, he's got a quick shot release. But whoever it is in the organization that makes the picks, typically it's the GM if the picks high enough for the scouting director. Once you get into the middle or lower rounds, it could be individual scouts getting, getting their guy in there. I guess my question was, I wondered whether the way in which they sometimes said that was couched. You know what I mean? So you did your you did your word analysis that was great, but did the overall tone of the article tend to be more negative for certain types of players? Even though, so they pointed out all the right things, but they did it in a way that kind of left it a little. Yeah, I, I, I think know. I think it's a good question, and, and you know, I, this this kind of approach hopefully is going to grab out those those nuggets that are the most important. Hi, um, I deal a lot in uh, sound quality analysis and uh, quantitative evaluation of audio systems and descriptors and words are uh, very important in what we do and asking listeners what they hear and so on. Um, and it seems like you have a really interesting study here where you have essentially descriptors of players. Uh, and one of the tools that we've used in the past for this is uh, using multi-dimensional scaling to build perceptual maps of uh, perceived audio quality. So I think that could be an interesting idea that your study is to take um, the adjectives used to describe players and build perceptual maps of different players or perceptual maps of players that are drafted or have success and so on. That sounds interesting. So my question is, you know, because you're using uh, textual analysis, What's the relationship between players who get a lot of viewings or get a lot of viewings from scouts versus those who are viewed a little bit less? Um, are, are players who are less viewed penalized by, by measures? Uh, okay, that's a good question. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can, um, and Michael might remember from the, from the models that we built. Um, so like, if somebody has good effort, um, and he has five mentions of good effort in his scouting report. Um, you know, are you counting that binary that he's got mentions of good effort, or do you give him a score of five versus zero? So I, I think we we used we, we tried it both ways, and, and, and with different variables, we we did, did different things with that. So I mean, that's a possibility that would um, adjust for the for the length of the scouting report. 
high loading went from 40 to a second. Um, for diagram, did you use the number of mentions? Or? Which number? Part of, part of the, I mean, for the, for the goal score, so one of the factors was CHL, um, even strength goal scoring rate, and then in this model, there was, what was it, three or four different different factors that were built in, whether they were binary or in some cases they could have given, given more um, credit or debit, depending on how many mentions were of, of the same trait. I don't know if that's an answer. Okay, thanks, Timo. Uh, Pass by Michael.